Well, hello, my loves. We made it to another mod, and this is pre-med and intro three. And I would like to welcome Miss Makia to the class, as well as Miss Kenya and Miss Tia, all right? So welcome, ladies. This is pre-med and intro. I'm doing pre-med right now. If we get cut off, I'm, I'm gonna come back anyway and do a separate intro. But what I'm gonna do is text you all when this is finished to let you know how to get the link, all right? Okay, the notes, pre-med three, human growth and development. Now, I'm gonna give you a little hint, okay? All of the terms on the first page are highlighted. You get it? Yeah. This is not uh, Orlando land for nothing, all right? So I'm gonna give you the definitions, if you don't have them. And what is adolescence? Adolescence is the transition between childhood and adulthood. Oh man, it can be miserable for you with a parent. Okay, oh, look at that poking up. That's adolescence. Benign prostatic hypertrophy. Well, benign is not what you're gonna be after you ate, no. Benign means it's not malignant. Prostatic. The beginning of the word tells you the organ. The end of the word, ick, tells you it's pertaining to the prostate. Hyper means excessive and trophy means growth. So what it is, is it's simply an enlarged prostate gland. Men have prostates, we don't ladies. Gerontology is the study of aging. And do not look at me when you hear that word, aging. I'm not aging, okay? Menopause is the ceasing or stopping of the menstrual cycle. It's usually around 45 to 55, but it's not written in stone. I've seen women as early as 38, 39, and some women in their 70s still having the menstrual cycle. Uh -uh. Neonate, neo means new, nate refers to birth. Guess what? Neonate is from birth to one month. So next time one of your friends has a baby and you go over to visit, you don't go, oh, what a cute baby. Oh, what a cute neonate. And watch their face. And, what are you calling my baby? Mm. Anyway, neuromuscular development. Neuro refers to nerves. Muscular, muscle. And actually what the definition is, motor skills. You think of a baby, you bring them home from the hospital, they're like third base, they just lay there. But by the time they're one, they're lifting their head up, they're rolling over, they may be crawling. The motor skills are kind of kicking in, all right? <laughs> Orthostatic hypotension. Hypo, opposite of hyper, means below or under. Uh, tension, we prefer to blood pressure here. This is when the patient sits or stands quickly and feels lightheaded. What happens is the blood pressure drops when the patient sits or stands quickly, mainly when they stand, they're sitting down. You've done it yourself, I'm sure. When you go to stand up and you go, ooh, ooh, and this is without drinking. Oh, Lord, I got dizzy, okay? That's basically what it is, but sometimes people have it with blood pressure issues. Osteoporosis is a weakening of the bones. What happens is after menopause, your body does not produce uh, progesterone, I mean estrogen anymore. And estrogen is what helps keep your bones strong. Well, without the estrogen, your bones weaken and they thin out. Pre-adolescence, now remember we had adolescence as the first word. And pre-adolescence ain't much better, baby. It lasts about two to three miserable years. And it's, girls usually happen around 10, boys around 12. What it means, one word answer is puberty. Pre-adolescence puberty, pee pee. Don't go pee pee on me, okay? You're speaking to pee pee, urinary incontinence. That is the inability to control urination. Now, I know you all are young, and I know you all can multitask. You can drive, slap your kid in the back seat, talk on the phone, listen to a friend, and have the radio on. Well, as you get older, let me tell you what my multitasking is. Walk, talk, walk, talk, laugh, sneeze, and pee on myself, okay? 
So it's two different types. There's stress where, you know, you sneeze or something and a little bit comes out. Then there's urge incontinence where all of a sudden you go, I had to go five minutes ago and I didn't even know it. All right, <laughs> then we have limbs. Limbs are your extremities, just like limbs on a tree. They're your arms and your legs. And the last one is subcutaneous, referring to tissue under the skin. This is actually the fatty layer of tissue, all right? Under your skin, fatty layer. All right, uh, we're gonna start actually with the notes right now. And I'm gonna tell you what's highlighted. So we're gonna start with uh, stages of growth and from infant to preschool, you're gonna highlight the very first sentence. Like we just said, a lot of these terms we just did, you're gonna rehear them again in the notes. So from birth to one month of age is a neonate. Now at this stage of life, they need everything done for them, okay? They require love, comfort, food, warmth, security, diapers changed, everything. This is a period though from one birth to one month of incredibly rapid development. Now from one month to one year, it's highlighted this sentence, is the infant phase. This too is a period of rapid development. It's during this first year of development that there is development of, and highlight the first one, which is neuromuscular or motor skills, psychosocial skills, intellectual skills, language. They may start to learn how round peg and a round hole. They may start being able to talk. Everybody's a different stage. So if your baby's not exactly doing that at that age, don't necessarily think something's wrong. Next one, we're gonna highlight the first sentence of the next paragraph. And that is from one to three years is known as the toddler. This is when you have to be with them all the time. Put the little plugs in your electrical outlets because somehow they will find it and know exactly what to put in it to shock themselves. Okay, but the toddler phase, they're important learning years. The child, they want independence. They'll tell you, no, no. You know, I have a great grandson and no, everything's no, no. It often includes temper tantrums. Now that I did not put up with when my kids were little. I'm gonna hold my breath, good because when you pass out, the first thing you're gonna do is breathe. And when we go shopping, I told my children, put your hands in your pockets. Number one, you don't want shit. Number two, you don't need shit. And number three, you ain't getting shit. That's the way it went, okay? All right, but some parents, oh yes, you can have it. Oh yeah, oh great, okay? They're gonna make a wonderful adult. All right, the physical growth and weight gain in this phase kind of slows down a little bit. At this phase, the child, again, needs love, security, trust, discipline. And that's what a lot of parents are lacking this, these days. Discipline the children. Oh, it's so, you know, put them in time out. No, for my kids, time out was how long your ass was knocked out. I'm sorry, but no, none of this time out mess, all right? All right, next paragraph. From three to six years, first sentence is highlighted again, is the preschool phase. Now, this is sometimes when bullying can start, all right? And if your child's the bullier, you better stop it. And if he's the one being bullying, you better find out, all right? Body proportions at this point become more childlike rather than infantile. You know how infants always have a bigger head? That's why they're so cute. Their head's so big for their body. But at this stage, three to six years old, they're gonna kinda come into their own. They continue to seek independence though, and usually around the age of four. Now growth may slow down here, but the child still has a strong desire to please the parents. Look, look, look what I did. And most parents, oh yeah, it's cute. I know you're busy and I know we have things to do, but take a few seconds. Oh, that is wonderful. Can you do another one? That is beautiful. Can you do it in a different color? Just to build up their self-confidence. Now, I'm not saying I don't want a cocky kid. No, 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 no. But children don't have a lot of self-confidence and they need their self-esteem built up. <clears throat> All right, at this phase, they may develop a fear of strangers. Now, I know everybody, I hope, tells their children about stranger, the stranger danger. 
Don't go near strangers. Don't take anything from a stranger. Don't go close to a stranger. But let me ask you something and be honest. Do you tell them what a stranger is? They could think it's a 55 Cadillac rolling down the street. They don't know. A stranger is someone you don't know. We had a code in our family, and it was 143. And that stood for the number of letters in I love you. If somebody came to pick them up at school and they didn't know him and they asked for the code or password and they didn't know it, you run. Well, first of all, it wouldn't have gotten that close, but still, okay? We always had the little password or the little code going. <clears throat> Their need at this stage, though, includes love, security, self-esteem, and praise. You know, when company comes over or even relatives come over, whatever it is, we always have the kid does something wrong. Don't you do that? You never made that, that. Don't do that. But do you ever praise them in front of other people? We fuss at them in front of other people. But do you praise them a little? Look that. Look what he did. Look. Look what she did. Isn't that nice? I don't care. Look, I, I'm kind of OCD because I'm an ASS. But letting the kids learn to set the table. They put the plates wrong. They put the fork and the knife wrong. And I, and my first instinct was to go back and change it. But no, I wouldn't do that, all right? I, I, I would, I would, but I didn't. You got to let them build up their own self-esteem, their own self-security. All right, elementary to adolescence. Oh, here we go. Highlight the first sentence. The elementary phase is from 6 to 12 years. This can also be known as middle childhood. It can also be known as for the parents. This is when peer pressure or bullying plays a large part in the children's lives. The child develops increased capabilities and self-control. They may begin to be able to perform observational learning. In other words, I see that and I see that and it equals that. Hey, their needs at this stage are love, security, and self-esteem. All right? Peer pressure, again, they begin to be able to do the observational learning. This may be the, in the very beginning. If you drop them off at school, give me a kiss when you get out the car. Mm, no. In fact, let me out a block early because I don't want anybody to see me getting out of the, <laughs> excuse me, getting out of the car. You're driving the car. Oh, no, no. Pre-adolescence, highlight that, lasts about two to three years. And like I put in here, they can be very long years. My oldest daughter, I had never been through this with a child before, and I came home one afternoon and she had totally rearranged every cabinet. I mean, where the plates used to be were now pots and pans. Where the silverware used to be was now something else. Are you kidding me? I, I mean, I wanted to, but no, it was like, you know, this, this looks nice, but let me ask you, is this really practical? You know, are you gonna reach up here? You know, but I had to praise her. I mean, she did something and, but you know, you say you can't put two women in one kitchen. It's true, you can't, all right? Okay, uh, highlight again the next sentence. This stage usually begins in females around the age of 10 and in males around the age of 12. Pre-adolescence starts with a P and so does the word puberty. Yes, thank you, puberty, all right? This is rapid physical growth and personality growth. You may see a cousin at a family reunion a few years ago, and the boys and the girls both look like string beans. I mean, straight up and down. And you go back a few years later, and you're like, damn, where did that come from? They're built like a Coke bottle, and I don't mean a two-liter bottle. I mean a Coke bottle, okay? And what happens here is the fat is redistributed in the body. Girls develop more curves, all right? And guys develop more upper body. If you ever ask a guy to turn around and stand away, facing away from you and look at them, and you will notice their shoulders are wide. It's almost like a triangle. Shoulders, and then it comes down to the waist, all right? Again, the fat is redistributed. <coughs> Excuse me. During this period, the girls highlighted may experience menarche. And highlight what menarche is. It's the very first menstrual cycle. Their breasts develop pubic and axillary hair, axillary is under the arm, uh, and their shape of the bodies begin to change, all right? Boys' voices begin to change. Don't make fun of them. 
Lord, when that was happening, and I'd call one of the kids' houses, and they had girls and boys as children. I couldn't, one time I said, Erica, no, this is Tony. Tony. <laughs> so from then on, I went, hi, how you doing, babes? And let them talk a little bit, and then maybe tried to guess who I was talking to, but don't do that, all right? But they, t boys develop pubic and axillary hair, and facial and chest hair, all right? But this is a time of, they don't know whether they're fish or chicken, and you can't get any more opposite than fish or chicken. They don't know what they are, all right? But that's the way they're developing, all right? What they need at this stage, I'm on the next page, is a feeling of achievement, independence, respect, trust, and to be listened to. Now, I'm gonna tell you something. The frontal lobe of the brain, I'm gonna take my brain out when we get back to class and show you now. The frontal lobe does not fully develop until your mid-20s. This is the part of the brain that is responsible for judgment and decision-making. So if that's not working right and hasn't developed yet until their 20s, that's why teenagers sometimes make such poor decisions. And you ask them, why did you do that? And they go, I don't know. And sometimes they really don't know. Sometimes they just BS them, but that's the way it goes, all right? Okay, next paragraph, highlight first sentence again. Adolescence now. This is a period between childhood and adulthood. It's a transitional period. And during the teen years, there's a struggle for a sense of self and individuality. You know, you're not allowed in the room when the adults are talking, at least weren't when we were kids. Adults talking, you're not in the room, and you don't want to go play with the little kids. What do you do, all right? So, <clears throat> This is a time of extreme change. Peer groups continue to be an important part of the adolescent's lives. Bodily changes continue to occur here. And the extremities, which in parentheses I put limbs, begin to grow quicker. And sometimes the boys, all of a sudden, when you're like in fifth and sixth grade, the girls may be a lot taller than the boys. And you're like, oh my God, I gotta go to a school dance with this? Ah. Well, all of a sudden you see him again a few years later and you're going where'd that come from I'm glad it did you grew up you got taller all right and the subcutaneous or fatty tissue is being rearranged in girls and guys at this phase the adolescent may struggle with individuality everybody wants to look like everybody else I thank God when they put uniforms in schools because before that the rich kids had the label designer clothes and the kids that weren't so rich didn't. And that was a distinct peer pressure group. Oh, if you didn't have somebody's name on your ass on your blue jeans, oh my God, you weren't worth speaking to, all right? Ridiculous. All right, adulthood stages, here we go. Highlight that early adulthood is considered to be the peak physical time of your life physical peak of your life, middle age, uh, early adulthood. This is the productive time in your life. You probably have a career going, marriage, children, all these things are going right now. The ages of this group you need to highlight are between 20 and 45. Now muscle strength is developed and it's at its peak by the age of 30, but highlight the next sentence because it's terrible. However, between the ages of 20 and 30, most deaths are caused by accidents, all right? Remember, frontal lobe isn't developed till your mid-20s, and you can still be making dumb decisions. Highlight the first sentence in the next paragraph. You see a you know pattern going here? Middle age is considered 45 to 60. This, too, can be a time of identity crisis, believe it or not, as an adult, all right? It's similar to something like adolescence. It's like the middle age crazy. You ever heard of that? What happens is you married all these years with kids and all of a sudden the kids have finished college, they're out of the house and now it's just you and him. And you realize we don't really have that much in common. We don't have that much to talk about, nothing. And this is when the guy decides he wants to feel young again and he may go out and pick himself up a cute little, you know what I mean? Now when my husband hit middle age crazy, I had never heard him say this, but pulled up in the driveway and I'm doing dishes and I hear this strange horn honk. I don't know who that is. And I go outside 
and there's my husband getting out of a black Jaguar. Tony, have you lost your mind? <gasps> no, I've always wanted a Jag. Now, we had been married 25 years at that time. It never came out of his mouth. Neither the car or the cat Jaguar. Neither, okay? But I figured it's better than putting some other blonde or redhead in the front seat. I can't bitch if he picks up some woman with blonde or red hair, because that's the color my hair is, for real. <laughs> anyway, what happens is it's called high life, the empty nest syndrome. Everybody's flown the coop, and now it's just you and daddy, all right? Um, menopause, highlight that whole sentence. Menopause is the cessation or stopping of the menstrual cycle, and it usually occurs between 45 and 55. Because of the drop in estrogen, it can lead to osteoporosis, highlight that, which is bone weakness. Now, older adults, don't, do not look at me when I say that. Do not, do not do it. Don't do that. Older adults or elderly highlight begins around the age of 60. I'm not there yet. I'll let you know. No, I'm lying. And there usually is a slow decline in function and body systems are affected. Your skin loses the elasticity. You see all this? Look, if I would love to have a facelift. Look, mm. Okay, all the lines around here are gone. Oh, yes. But it's collagen underneath the skin. It starts to dwell, dwindle away, and it makes everything on top of it sag. So, skin loses elasticity. The subcutaneous or fat decreases and leads to sagging and wrinkling of the body. Hair may become thinner, and you can have a lot of hair loss, men and women. Um, highlight that it is reduced pigmentation may cause graying of the hair, which is due to a lack of melanin, which is a coloring agent in our bodies. I know that's what it's gonna say on the test, but I think it's having kids that gives you gray hair. We had neighbors next door, never had kids. She looked gorgeous, I could have slapped her at any age, all right? Her figure, her hair, her face, her skin, ooh. But I, I think it caught up with it because we saw her a few years ago and boy, it happened all at once. Poor baby. Muscle and bone mass decreases and bone reabsorption now is greater than bone production or formation. So height can be affected. I know it happened to my mother-in-law. I mean, she was short to begin with, but she, we could eat soup off of her head. I mean, the poor lady, she just shrunk. Cardiovascular. Now, this is the general functions that decline. Cardiovascular disease is the number one killer of older adults. Blood pressure is often higher, highlight orthostatic hypotension, which is the sudden drop in blood pressure upon sitting or standing, can occur. This is lightheadedness and syncope, which is fainting. Now, the older adult, cognitive intelligence, the thinking part, all right? There's usually no loss of intelligence. If you were a dummy before, you're a dummy after. If you're smart before, you're smart after. But reaction time can be a little bit slower, and it may be more difficult to adjust to change. Have you ever been driving down the highway or the street, and you're doing a speed limit, 45, not a car behind you for miles, and all of this car is in the median neutral ground, and all of a sudden they pull out right in front of you? They had to pull out in front of you, and it's an old man driving an old beat-up truck doing 12 miles an hour. Now, he could have very easily gotten behind you because there's not a car in sight, but that's what drives me crazy, okay? Digestion begins to slow down, and it can lead to more heartburn, bloating, and constipation. Ugh. All right, um, prostate gland. We don't have that, but guys do. Uh, highlight, the, this is benign, a BPH, all right? Approximately 80% of men over 60 have this. This is, stands for benign prostatic hypertrophy, which is just an enlargement of the prostate gland. Now, because where the prostate gland is located, right next to the urinary bladder, as women get older, sometimes our organs start to fall down there by your hoo-hoo, and we may have to get up times, several times a night and go to the bathroom. Well, guys are no different. You may meet each other in the hallway coming and going because with the prostate gland right next to the urinary bladder, the prostate gland enlarges, it pushes on that bladder and the bladder can't hold as much. And guys are going to the bathroom, all right? 
but that's urinary incontinence and highlighted, which is the inability to control urination. All right, not due to a disease usually. Hearing and visual sharpness or acuity. This often is affects older adults. All right, now let me show you something. You see the whole bottom part of the page? From there all the way down. Okay, now this week we're going to study this, plus we're going to get into medical terminology. That's why I'm kind of going over this rapidly. Um, the average life expectancy highlighted is 77.9 years. The study of aging is known as gerontology. Now, the important thing thing of a healthcare professional, three things, always treat the senior with respect and dignity, speak slowly and repeat information if they need it, and always offer the senior assistance, all right? Offer it, don't have to ask for it. Now this is for you, you should always ask the elderly patients to bring in their current meds. Don't write it down, because if one letter is transposed or flip-flop, one letter, it can be a whole different drug. So have them bring the medication in if it's their first visit so you can write it down properly, all right? Um, because they tell them also to include any OTC or over-the-counter meds. They, I mean, you know, like vitamins, whatever. They may not consider that, but tell them to bring it. Always, again, ask the senior to bring all meds to the office um, with them at their appointment. Don't let them just write down the names because, like I said, one letter difference and you're off and running, all right? Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and stop there for today on pre-med. Tomorrow, we're gonna start off with abbreviations and symbols. And you can see how what all of them are highlighted. Get the hint? Okay. All right, my loves, um, I've enjoyed it. I will talk to you in a little bit with intro, but I'm gonna text you right now and give you the link to this one, all right? Take care, see y'all in a little bit.